going to be discussing today. Today we're going to be discussing, um, you know, some news about Disney, and I'm going to try to get my co-host on. Let's see if I can get her. Let's see, listener. Huh. Let me see. Let's see if I can. Can you hear me? Just bear with us. Autumn? Autumn? Hold on. Is there... Is anything working? When you... Autumn! Yes. Oh, thank God we finally got you in. We figured it out. Yes, it's like figuring out Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues? <laughs> we can too. Yeah. Um, so, obviously I'm going to have to edit this. I don't know if it will allow me to edit the, the beginning, but that's what happens when you start something new. Well, then if you're going to edit that out. <laughs> So, I've watched a lot of Blue's Clues. Yeah, done. I've watched it when I was a kid, too. Oh, I've got four kids, so we still watch Blue's Clues. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Um, let's get into the topic of the Disney Travel Cast member who saved a woman's life, what, three weeks ago? Yes. Oh, my God. I read that story. I heard it all over the news. Um... It's just, it's insane what what happens. Yes. I, I mean, give me your take on it first. Well, domestic violence is a really, really big issue, and people really don't realize how common it is. Uh, you know, somebody shows up and they're acting weird or, you know, some snide comments here and there, and they don't really realize how bad it actually can be. And so I've seen a lot where people are able to, quote, unquote, order a special pizza or, you know, something like that. So just, you know, booking a Disney trip, you know, that's one of those things, if that's your thing. Yeah. I mean, I think that was a smart move on her part. Um, I don't know if she was actually – they didn't actually tell us if she was going to be going to Disney or she just did that because it was probably the easier – way to do because it would give her a little bit of time to talk to somebody on a travel agency and mm-hmm. usually all they and uh, and you're a travel agency uh agent so you probably ask a lot of yes or no questions so yeah. it was probably the best job um i mean best people to call since a lot like a like a pizza place like you said they might ask you oh what what do you want on your pizza and all that stuff so that's really not going to be helpful well, but like, do you want pepperoni on your pizza? Do you want cheese oh, on your pizza? Uh, you true. know, what address should we deliver this to? 
True, but I, you know what? what? I like the Disney the Disney one better only because oh, yeah. of Disney actually would step in. I don't think a pizza place would. I think they would have been like, you know what? It's not my business. Yeah. So. Well, Disney, you know, what address can I put on your reservation? Um, what are the date of birth for the, you know, what's the names and the date of birth for the guest traveling? Right. And uh, honestly, uh, uh, I hope I didn't hear any news. I didn't know if she got promoted for that or she got something. Uh, but I know that she has been recognized uh, down here in Florida by uh, mm-hmm. a lot of cast members and recognized by the news crew. I don't believe they gave out, you know, I don't think she did like an interview yet or, or anything no, like that. I, I know- think because of, um, pri- for privacy reasons, they won't release any names involved in it. Right. You'll be able to find, you know, his arrest record, but it won't say who she was or who the uh, caller was or the, uh, not the caller, the uh, agent was, because that'll put her life at risk, too, if he ever gets out, you know, with the vendetta. I think he is out. Oh, is he? Th- well, yep, yeah, he is, has been arraigned, it looks like. From from what I heard on the news uh, a couple of days ago, he was released. So, yeah, on, uh, he, on he January 10th. Bail. Yeah, so he posted bail. Yeah. Um, that's, that's insane. I, I mean, I don't get how... You do something bad and you can still Oh, they bail. did um, put his name out here. Oh, they did? Yeah, his name what is they, Wayne Shiflet, 38-year-old Wayne Shiflet, and they were arguing about him getting a real job instead of wow. selling fire extinguishers. He was arrested really? and charged with strangulation, terroristic threats with intent to terrorize another in simple assault. That's insane. It doesn't release wow. her name, but it just releases his. He was selling fire extinguishers? I didn't even realize that was a job. I guess, you know, sell vacuums, sell fire extinguishers, knives. Yeah, I, thought maybe, I thought maybe fire extinguishers, uh, sorry, I can't talk right now, uh, would have been more of a, like, fire department type of thing. Well, I don't know, you know, door-to-door salesman, you can sell pretty much anything. True. I didn't think about that. But it was in Pennsylvania, so you, you never know. I mean, I, I've been to Pennsylvania a bunch of times. Uh, my family used not. to live there. So they're, they're a little um, – they're not up with the times. They're they're very um, – and if any of my family members oh. from Pennsylvania are hearing this, I'm sorry I'm calling you out, but you guys really have to get with the times, wholesome. please. <laughs> <laughs> they're wholesome. You guys really have to get with the time. So, I mean, traditional. Yeah, well, I mean, they still got the Amish people there. So, we have Amish in Indiana. Oh, really? I did not realize that. I thought maybe, I mean, I've heard where there's other Amish families, but I I know they're predominantly mostly in uh, Pennsylvania. um, Yeah. And I believe some parts of Ohio. So, yes, uh, Ohio, Indiana. I'm sure there's more. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that. I know there's a big sect in Florida as well. I used to watch the uh, Breaking Amish show on TLC. Oh, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a show for Amish people. Yes, it's about them leaving the Amish culture and experiencing quote unquote normal life. Oh, hello, Alpha Mike. Thank you for uh, listening to the show. But, um, yeah, getting back, I mean, I'm glad that the woman, her life is saved. Um, I know, I know down here in Florida, I don't know if it's the same in Pennsylvania, um, for a domestic violence case like that, uh, once you post bail, with that bail, you also get a no contact, which means you are no longer allowed to talk to them unless the victim goes to that said lawyer, mm-hmm. whoever was, you know, the lawyer, when they all stand up to the judge at the police department um they will uh tell you look you have to have them tell them no you want to see them and then they'll do a whole little i think it takes like two weeks for them to expunge the entire thing um that's down here yeah i I know know a lot of places you actually have to physically press charges and uh petition for a no contact order see here in florida you you don't have to press charges as soon as there's a domestic violence call the the man or usually it's 99% the male, the male that's going to be taken. 
Um, even if it, and, and let's not get us wrong. There are men that get abused as well, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not as, how, how do we say it? Um, common. It's not as common. Yeah. But it does happen. So mm-hmm. we're not just taking the one side. It happens to everyone. But unfortunately in our day and age, they always take the mail, even if it isn't the male's fault. And, in this case, it was the male's fault. The proof, and, yeah, and he's probably got out now. I don't like. I said I don't know if he's got the no contact uh, list, which mm-hmm. is he's not allowed to contact her. He's not allowed to see her. I don't know what they do over there, but like I said, down here in Florida, they will say no. If you see him, you get arrested again. You will not be getting out uh, with bail. You'll be spending a couple of days in jail. So. Okay. Uh, but like I said, they, they can arrest you down here with no press charges. So, um, and I've seen it a bunch of times here in my own complex. So yeah. I've seen people get arrested. They, they got into a fight. No one hit anybody, but if you just even arguing. just get into a fight, yeah, if you just argue, they will, they'll take you down here. They, they don't play games with the domestic violence down here. A verbal um, altercation. Yes. So. Th- I like to applaud the cast member, so mm-hmm. oh, oh no, it's gonna keep on going. <laughs> We're giving her extra applause because I feel she deserves it. That was cool. I like these little these little buttons we get now for, yeah. you know, I like it. Um, and to anybody who believes that domestic violence is okay, <laughs> boo to you. <laughs> um, let's, ooh, you just sent me something. Yes. Why don't you it's tell me news. a little bit about that? Yes, please, let, let's get into that really quick because you just sent me something. Yeah, um, the Liberty Bell is opening, reopening, um, as well as Rivers of America. So I would assume that Tom Sawyer's Island would also be op- reopening again very soon. I believe. Well, it, I don't know since just, that one's a playground, but I know that Tom Sawyer Island is actually open. Um, is it now? There. Yep. There was people there this morning. Okay. Um, so I believe it just opened up today. I think the Liberty Bell made its appearance last night. Uh, yes. So it is, it's running again this morning. Mm-hmm. I'm actually heading out today uh, to go get uh, Megan, and we're going to go to uh, Magic Kingdom, and we're going to go see the new stuff. I might head over to awesome. uh, Tom Sawyer Island just to see what they did, um, only because they did. They, it took them a long refurb since it's been since October. So yes. that is that yeah is they pretty did long. it yeah they replaced the whole track um I saw where they had to tow the Liberty Bell by hand from behind the Magic Kingdom yes I I believe I was there when they did that um I didn't get it on tape unfortunately um oh. I'm sad about that I, I missed it I don't think a lot of people got it on their YouTube shows um mm-hmm. I guess they were trying to keep it uh to keep the magic alive. Yeah. I'm the type of YouTuber where I'm like a vlogger where I like to keep the magic alive. If I see something that doesn't seem like, oh, you know what, if I post this, I'm going to, you know, ruin magic for everybody. I don't want to do that because I don't want to be mm-hmm. that guy. But I'm I just sent you that... a picture uh, from the Disney travel agent site of them. Yes, towing that was last boat. night. Yeah, tow it from them towing her back out to their her track. Yeah, that was la- yep, that was last night. I saw that um, this morning on a news report. But mm-hmm. I, I'm looking at the title that you sent that you sent me, and that this is what bothers me is because this Sunday is the Super Bowl Sunday, mm-hmm. and Disney is known for after somebody wins the Super Bowl, what do they always say? Wh- what are you gonna do Where, next? What are you gonna do next? We're going to Disney World. Exactly, we're going to Disney World. So, but this year, um, I got the announcement myself, I saw, that Disney World is not going to be doing the Super Bowl Parade. Are they going to do a cavalcade? 
No, they're not. Apparently, other people have asked around, and a lot of the cast members are saying no. But you never know. Things could change by Sunday. Yeah. Um, and the other thing about it is, it's a cavalcade. I don't. It's it's just like a normal thing. Why can't they just go on that float that takes them around? They only have to do yeah, it them, once. Yeah, put them on the car and let them wave and. Right. You know. And and someone who's a Patriot fan like myself, if Tom Brady wins, uh, that's as close as I'm going to be able to meet Tom Brady. Let's see, so, now I need the boo button. Oh, uh, you need the boo button? Yeah, I need All the right. boo button now. Why do you need the boo button? For Tom Brady. Oh. <laughs> I'm a Colts fan. I'm from Indiana. Uh, yeah, well, you guys should be looking for a new quarterback as well, just as just as bad as my Patriots need a quarterback. So this is true. Since uh, you guys, I think you, you only have Jacob Eason on your on your team now. Since all your quarterbacks are one retired and the other one's on free agency now. Yes. Do you want to hear a fun fact? I am from the area of like one county over from where Peyton Manning grew up. Really? Mm-hmm. He grew up in awesome. Spencer County, Indiana. Jay Cutler also is from that from there. I went to all of Jay Cutler's home football games as a child for his high school team. I feel so bad. I, I like Jay Cutler, to be honest with you. He just got a bad rap being with the Bears. Mm-hmm. And the Bears, when he was on that team, he was – that team was terrible. Um, and I, I'm sad that he – you know, when he finally was released, he couldn't get anywhere else uh, because yes. no one truly wanted him. And, and I feel bad for the guy. Um, Not to change sports, yeah. but um, Scott Rowland's mom was my first grade teacher. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We crank out a lot of athletes from this area. <laughs> so I'm going to be trying – I'm going to be going to Disney that Monday. I'm going to, I'm going to get myself <laughs> a park pass for that Monday after the Super Bowl because that's usually yes. when they do the, uh, the cavalcades. <laughs> Yes. And I'm going to see if they do anything because uh, I want to see if they change their mind. Because, you know, what's funny is this could be the one year that they're not going to do it. I mean, that's a little sad for me because, you know, last year, the last time the Patriots won, I tried to come down here. Couldn't make it. Yeah. I was stuck at – we had a blizzard up in New York, so we couldn't go. Um, so I want, I really wanted to go, you know, see this. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I couldn't do it. And this is my only chance to to go meet them. And I'm not even a Bucks fan, but I, I'm going to be rooting for the Buccaneers this uh, Sunday since I can't stand the Chiefs. And I'm just here for at, the commercials. Oh, don't get me started. The commercials I heard are not going to be that great this year. No, I heard a lot of app um, type commercials this year. They push like apps and such for your phones. Yeah, I, I'm upset about the Budweiser. The Clydesdale are not going to be involved anymore. Yeah, I saw that. I was very upset. I like those Clydesdale ones, especially the one with the the golden uh, puppy and Mm -hmm. uh, the horses. That one's the best. I have actually Um, um, met the Clydesdales in person, too. Yeah, they came to Long Island as well. The the last year, uh, me and Megan were in Long Island. We we saw them. They came down. They actually came to Long Island, which was shocking because nothing ever Mm -hmm. comes to Long Island. Well, they, my husband um, used to work for a company that was a distributor for Budweiser. And for their big anniversary of their company, the Clydesdales were actually brought in and they built a stable, a mobile stable behind my husband's work. And they had a private party where we could actually be up close and like with them. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't get, see, I didn't get that. We, they were, they blocked off the road and we, we watched them come down the road. That was about it. Um, oh, no, we got up close and personal with them. We were able to walk through their stables. and But I've also been to Grant's farm, too. But uh, Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I believe the only reason why they came to Long Island was because we just – we there was an old college that uh-huh. we had on Long Island. And they uh, – because of some reason, they couldn't get people to come to it. So it shut down, and they turned it into a brewery. Mm-hmm. So – I'm assuming they it's like a brewery and a bar. So and they were they the biggest seller was Budweiser. So I'm assuming that would be they because it was the grand opening. They came down mm-hmm. to the grand opening. Well, that's uh, really cool. So that would that was pretty cool of them to do. Yeah, oh, I love that the, picture. Yeah, we got to meet the Dalmatian and 
you know, the uh, Clydesdales right up there, up and close. And so. Oh, wow. That's a good horse. It was just look. And he even looked at the camera. He's like, I, this is my good side. And side eyeing you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we have to talk about the most confusing part of this entire uh, podcast. Disneyland's new annual pass holders. Oh, goodness. Who's oh, on my first God. with that? What was it? I said, it's like, who's on first? Yeah. I've heard that. Th- this is the most confusing thing ever because now they're changing the whole Disney pass holders. You're not going to be able to get, you know, it'll still be yearly, but they're mm-hmm. changing the name and then how many times you can come in. So now it's called Legacy. It mm-hmm. is now the Legacy pass holder title. Yes. Uh, and from what I heard is a lot of people are not happy with it, the new system at all. Four uh, decades they haven't even, and they canceled it. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> they don't even know how to even – they haven't even got in. They said they're still going to change it. And they're hoping for a 2021 return for these passes sometime mm-hmm. in the next couple of months. Uh, I don't see it happening. I see it another year before this is officially – they officially open. I agree, and I saw that there's going to be levels that you can purchase where the, uh, you know, have tiers. Yeah, so the, this is what I got from one of the people I, I know from California. So legacy mm-hmm. pass holders can pick two, four, six, eight, or a year. Mm-hmm. You can pick um, two day two days a week. Yes. Or two days a month. So they allow you to do either you want to do it two days a week or two days a month. Uh, if you do it two days a month, it's a little bit less. Um, yeah. Uh, because cause, I heard uh, that it's going to be like $400 up to, was it 14 or $1,800? Uh, from what I just saw, it was $1,399. I'm looking at it right now. Well, I'm saying for the uh, for the cheapest ones. Oh, for the cheapest ones, I think it's thirteen ninety. Yeah, it goes up to thirteen ninety nine for the cheapest ones. Oh, and I thought then that the was other for the ones, most expensive. No, the most expensive goes all the way up to a little over two thousand. Okay. Wow. So, and I'm not a huge fan of this because for someone who like me, and this is and this is what that upsets me is that because this is also going to affect the ticket sales for regular mm-hmm. guests who just want to come in who are not annual pass holders. Um, well, that's just it. Am, Most people at Disneyland are annual pass holders. They ninety five percent are. Yes, that's like going to your local park, or you know, you, like whenever you get a pass for the zoo that you you know, like a zoo membership. You know, you go to Disneyland. You see right. Around people watch. And like, so. uh, you, you, I get it here where people have complained and like said. Oh, you know, why are animal passes complaining here at Walt Disney World? Um, they get everything. Not really. Mm-hmm. We don't – over at Disneyland, yes, because, like I said, 95% of their revenue comes from annual pass holders. So you Whereas, can a fun fact? Sure. When the Disneyland annual pass debuted in 1984, it cost $65 for an annual pass. For the year? For the year, in 1984, an annual pass was $65. Dang. I think we need to get – we need to build a time machine and go back to 1984. I wasn't even born then. Neither was I. <laughs> uh, no, but I know that the – when Walt was around, uh, I believe he gave the two first children in the park lifetime mm-hmm. passes. Um, yes. I heard that they don't ever use them, which is to me, I feel like that's a waste. I would yes. be using it if Walt gave me a lifetime pass to, till I die. I'm going every day. Yes, I agree. I feel like maybe like Bob the RC, who was the first greeter at Disneyland, also has one. Yes, he does. And we got to find a way to get him on the show because we we were just talking about it. But yeah, he and I, I think, are Facebook friends. I'll reach out. I'm Facebook friends with him as well. Okay. Um, so he had me about a couple of months ago. Yes, I think that's whenever I invited him to the group. Yes, you invited him to the group, and then I added him on my regular Facebook. Yes, okay. So, 
But yeah, I I think it would be awesome to get him on. I would love to hear. I I love to hear the old stories of of Walt. Stuff that people mm-hmm. don't know, and stuff that Disney doesn't give out. You know, yes. in like the uh, Walt's one man dream that they don't even tell you about that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, so so ninety five percent of Anna Pass holders make up Disneyland, and then five percent are usually like regular guests, like myself. Um, who come just for vacation. Yes. Um, whereas here at Disney World, they would think, oh, you know, you're all predominantly pass holders as well, and that's why the guests think we're getting treated better than they are. Mm-hmm. Incorrect. It's the guests that make up more of Disney World. Yeah. And the annual pass holders here are actually the ones who who get less. Yeah, we pay for the year. Well, we don't get as many perks as you do. We don't get early morning. We didn't get, you know, after hours. We didn't get, um, you know, certain parties you that you would free get. Ma- you got uh, free parking and free memory maker, a couple of exclusive parties. Right. That, yeah, you get that. Um, not, when I got not, my own Not so much exclusive really parties. It. I'm saying more like the uh, preview days for new rides. Right, you would get a preview day, um, but I mean, I, I believe it could be fifty fifty. Um, I think DVC the guests even get a had, little bit more parties. DVC, I tried to get, but my God, that is expensive. I thought it was cheap the way that they were talking to us. Uh-huh. It is not. It was like five thousand dollars. I'm like, no, but they get their own private parties. And yeah, events. they get the um, DVC Moonlight Party. I think it was. Yes. I think that's what they call it. Uh-huh. And that goes until like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I so miss the was, days of where they had the twenty-four hour park days, like once a year. They oh had my god, the twenty-four hour. I know the for cast members it was the worst day ever, but it seems like a cool concept. I saw my first ever that made me want to do YouTube, and this is where it came from, which was. <laughs> um, you know, I've listened to Prince Charming Dev and Tim Tracker and all those yes. other, other ones. Um, I met Tim a couple of times. Uh, My kids went down guy. the Tim Tracker rabbit hole this weekend. They're finally old enough to comprehend, you know, more than just ride videos. And they went down right. the Tim Tracker rabbit hole very hard. I think we had like four hours of Tim Tracker. Well... It was it, – let me explain what happened last, me last night because I got into an argument with a couple of people. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm in a couple of Disney groups, and one of them was talking about uh, vloggers, Disney vloggers. And I'm like, okay, what is this about? And there were people talking about bashing just all vloggers. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what? <clears throat> like, Why? They said, oh, they ruin everything. They uh, They don't know what they're talking about. They spread lies. And I and I commented and said, look, I'm sorry that my content is not that great for you people. Not not that they you know they didn't mention my show because, as I said, my show is still small. That yeah. you know I'm not on a large scale yet. And I like it small. I mean, most people want to make money off YouTube, but for me, I just do it as because I love it and it's fun for me. Yeah. And I wrote, I'm sorry that my content is not that great for you guys, uh, but it's something I truly love. And I don't spread lies. I have a podcast and everything, and I don't like to spread lies. I we we don't spread anything unless there's actually hard, concrete information, and yeah. we will not give out anything. We won't even bash anybody. So, whereas some companies do, uh, some vloggers do, and one of them came up was Tim Tracker, and mm-hmm. they were saying how Tim doesn't give a damn about his content anymore or his people. He's just got an attitude. They're pushing his, their, their child, uh, their, their baby boy uh, into the spotlight without his consent. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Why are you guys saying some ma- nasty stuff about him? He loves his kid. His wife so is awesome. They seem like uh, a very awesome. wholesome family. Yeah, they are. They're really nice. I've, I've met them a couple of times, and they're really nice to talk to. And... I, it was just sad to hear that people were just flat out bashing him, hmm. and it's uh, calling Jen a helicopter mom. I'm like, wh- why? I'm like, 
so she's all over the place. But that's what happens when you're a mom of of a one year old. You, you're going to be all over the place. So what if she then, a little bit? You know, I I have four kids, and I am definitely a hoverer. I have to know where they're all at at all times. And if we're out and about somewhere, they need to be within sight and sound of me. So I I don't know. And then what was it? Uh, then they, uh, like I said, they were going after their kid, and I'm like. Why are you going after the kid? He's only one. Well, he shouldn't. I hate when what people do you call bring it? people's children into things like that. Well, he shouldn't. He should not be on tape. He should be living his life. I'm like, his life is with his parents. If they're going to be, if they're vloggers, of course he's going to be on the show. I mean, mm-hmm. he's an adorable little child. And they're saying yeah. that this is just for ratings. I said no. He had people way before the kid, so. That it, it, you people just want to be upset about anything, really, because it, it's just sad. I, and they would go after me and said, "Oh, what's your show?" I said, uh, "If you guys are going to bash people, I'm not going to give out my show. I, I don't need." And I said, "This is what I actually wrote." I said, "I don't need your support if you're going to bash mm-hmm. vloggers. I don't need that type of support." And I'm sorry. No, not at all. And and I left. And I got a bunch of people who actually messaged me last night. Uh, asking, they said, look, I'm sorry that they did that. So can we, can we listen to your podcast? Can we do this? So I gave them, I, and I made sure that they were trustworthy. I didn't, I don't like people mm-hmm. who are just going to come and bash us because that's not what I'm oh, here yeah. to do. I don't, uh, so it, it was just interesting that that happened. But with this, with this whole Disneyland thing, I'm, I, I don't know how long it's going to work before they say, Hey, it's not working. We got to go back to our old self. Yeah, I agree completely. And it, I, it, what the test is going to be is that um, the sales, if they make enough sales or if they don't make enough sales, that's what's going to make them decide what is uh, where they're going to go from there. Because I don't yeah. – my opinion is this is not going to work. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think that it's going to be, I don't think people are going to want to pay that much for an annual pass to only be able to go two days. That just kind of takes the spontaneity out of, you know, waking up one morning and being like, hey, I need a mental health day from work. Let's go to Disney. Right. And that's that's what I like about my annual pass. So if I need a mental health day or I, I usually go when when Megan is off work. But if yeah. I need a day where it's like, OK, I need to go. And I need to just release all stress. And even my sister even said to me the other day, she said Mm -hmm. that Disney is kind of like my safe haven. Um, Being that I do have, uh, and I love my sister to death, but she likes to diagnose me. I I was born with um, ADHD, but it wasn't until late, it wasn't until later in my life that I was uh, recently just diagnosed as well with the ADHD um, on the autism spectrum. Okay. So, and then with a little bit of bipolar. So she, I, she understands where the Disney thing comes into play. And they finally, my family finally gave up and said, look, he's going to do it. He's going to go to Disney. We can't basically tell him to grow up because it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, they, I guess they finally realized that, Disney is mm-hmm. something that keeps me uh, sane. If you want, if you want to get technical, yes, and it doesn't make me lose my mind. <laughs> so you know, so, ADHD could be a sign of uh, genius, uh, like creative genius. A lot of really well-known artists and creative type people have ADHD. So, oh yeah, I know, I. I and it's because, Thank you know, God. they say people with ADHD kind of lack inner inhibition to control themselves, so they're more in tune with their spontaneous creative side. Well, what was it? They said um, Albert Einstein. He wasn't mm-hmm. diagnosed, but they, they think now he had it. Yeah, well, that wasn't even a thing back then, but yeah. Right. And look what he did. He uh, invented, what was it, uh, Speed of Light? E M E equals M C squared. I think that's the speed of light. Yes. Yep. Yes. So uh, they also the, say uh, Leonardo da Vinci may have been uh, ADHD as well. Oh yes, I I do agree on that one. 
uh, mostly because of the painting. Mm-hmm. Um, that I is have something said that to describe how it feels to have ADHD as an adult, it's like take a big box of ping pong balls and throw them all at the wall. And yes. just watch them go everywhere because, you know, it's one minute. It's like, oh, I need to do this and this and then and this. And like, oh, yeah, there's something over there and then something over there. Maybe I need to do this. And nothing ever gets actually accomplished because my mind is everywhere and nowhere all at once. Exactly. I I will give you that is 100 percent myself. So. Um, I, you know, it is funny. My my wife makes fun of me and she goes and says, why don't you drink coffee in the morning? Because she'll be up at like five o'clock in the morning and mm-hmm. I'll have to take her to work. And she'll be like, oh, you don't, you don't drink coffee. You don't drink nothing, but you have all this energy. I don't need the coffee because I already have the energy as it is. Actually, um, uh, as an adult with ADHD and a caffeine addiction, uh, the caffeine doesn't give me energy. The caffeine actually kind of helps center me. Like it brings I, me down a level to where my brain can, you know, focus and, you know, there's a balance of how much, too much caffeine where I get crazy and, you know, just enough caffeine to balance my life out to where my brain can click on and I can focus on tasks and, you know, goals throughout the day. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I know I'm trying to cut the soda down because I drink it a lot, mm-hmm. but the caffeine does, um, she comes up to me all the time. She says, how are you not awake? Like, cause I could fall asleep after I just drank, uh, maybe a two liter. Uh, yes. And not realizing, not realizing I'm doing it, and I know it's gross. Not, re- I don't do it anymore. But when I used to, um, I, used, I can still, um, at my even at my age, I can drink a cup of full, fully caffeinated coffee and go to sleep. Right, and she's she'll come after me. And she'll be like, "Why, why, why is that putting you to sleep?" I said, "Even I drink tea before I go to sleep, uh, before mm-hmm. I go to bed, because that also puts me to sleep as well." And she's like, "How? I I would be wide awake." And it's proven that she does. She stays awake. So um, I told her, I said, whatever is caffeinated is the opposite effect in my body. I said, I can get hyper on water, but caffeine can knock me out just like that. Right. Do do you have any other uh, topics you would like to talk about today? I did, but now I forgot. (laughs) Do you have any uh, travel agents uh, agency uh, news for us? Um, possibly go to Disney World. You know, come find me on Facebook. Autumn at Majestic Memories Travel. Um, I did get a update from Disney about the Super Bowl since we were talking about it. I just got it, and it said that you know while there won't be a parade this year, uh, stay tuned after the Super Bowl. And they will be airing the traditional um, commercial for Disney World, the I'm going to Disney World commercial. Um, They said they do hope to be able to bring it back in 2022. So it's going to be just a temporary hiatus this year. Yeah. But, yeah, there's a lot of really, really good specials right now. Yeah, I I mean, it makes sense. Uh, You'll know more about the specials than I do. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. And I like that you 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 were able to say that to uh, our fans about that because it, it helps them know what they can do if they don't want to go through Disney themselves. They can always yeah. go through you. You know, so to book with an actual travel agent, the agency I work for is Mouse Eared. Um, so we are you know official, and right now there is a really really good thirty percent off room offer. And whenever they do the room offers, it does tier down. So 30% off of deluxe and it trickles down. It's about 10 to 15% off of the values. But the one that I have been uh, booking a lot of clients with is the two free day tickets. I actually saved my own family almost $2,000 by booking that for our family trip. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think it's book three days and you get two days for, or book more than three days and tickets and you get two of those for free. So we got a five day ticket and, uh, we have a suite at the Art of Animation. We saved about $2,000 off of it. Oh, wow. That, that is a huge difference. Oh, yeah. 
And so, and you know, the good thing about Disney travel agents, we are absolutely no obligation to book and there is no harm in asking us for help. You know, it's a hundred percent free for you to use and, you know, no obligation, free quote. Our services are free to use and we're there to do all the hard work for you. You know, you have a glitch with a, you know, reservation or anything, your agent's there to help you walk you through it instead of you having to stop your entire vacation and go deal with, you know, issues. Right. And uh, you know what? I went through, I should have gone through, and I think I'm going to go through you guys next time uh, when Uh Disneyland reopens because I'm not going to go through Expedia no more because I feel like that that ruined everything. (laughs) But uh, we do have one more topic. I just forgot that we had it, and okay. let's get into that. Hold on, let me see if we get this, what this sounds like. Oh, okay, let's do that one. When you wish. Oh no, we got music. A star makes no difference. Okay, that was weird that that played music for some reason. Um, the Jungle Cruise. Yes. It's changing. Uh huh. They are going to be changing a lot of the scenes in the Jungle Cruise, which is, and not limited to, the ambush scene, the mm-hmm. the joke where they say, I guess they forgot how to square dance scene, um, <laughs> the scene of Trader Sam is going to be changing. Yes, the headhunters. Yep. And I believe the... Gorilla scene, uh, I think they said. I think they're going to, because uh, I know that the picture that they the came out with. Scene, or was it the one where the. Uh, oh, the uh, rhino scene. Yeah, where they're up the pole and the rhinos are poking at them. Yes, that was one of the scenes that was going to be changing. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's all about being inclusive, which is now the new key of any Disney cast member. Who was in there? So it used to be four mm-hmm. keys. Now it's five keys. Yes. And for any and anybody who wants to be, because what was it? I said that is your area of expertise because I have never been a cast member. Yes. So let me just let everyone know if you plan to be a cast member anytime in the future, uh, you need to know these five keys. If you don't know these five keys, and someone comes up to you and says, "Hey, name one of the keys," and what does it mean? Um, or they tell you what number is it because they have them numbered. If you don't know it, you will be suspended. Interesting. Yes. So always make sure you think it might be a job, but it also is a lot of research. That is why um, I love the job because I knew how to keep up with up-to-date stuff. And a lot of people got uh, got you know upset with me because they're like, oh, how come you know so much stuff? Because I keep up to date. I don't want to be like you and be like, hey, I'm just going to take this as a job and call it a day. Because it's not. Yeah. It's not just a job. Because they can yes. they can come down and test you. Anytime. Yeah. Oh, oh, any job, you know. You know, retail and whatnot. They have secret shoppers and stuff. And they, as you should be tested. You know, you have to stay up to date on all of your training to be effective in your role. So... So the fifth key for anybody who is looking to be a cast member will be inclusive, which is now the inclusion of – well, okay, I'll explain it because I don't know how Dizzy explains it now, but my view, because I haven't been back yet, is that they are including anybody of any race, um, any yeah. uh, gender, and all that. Yes. So that is how I would explain it as easy as possible. So they are trying to, and I mentioned this, I believe, I mentioned this in a podcast over a little bit over a year ago uh, when I was doing the podcast all alone by myself before I got you guys as a, as a co-host. Yes. And I explained what rides were going to be getting a new revamp because of the new inclusive uh, key, and one of them was when Splash Mountain was announced that they will be changing it to the Princess and the Frog. Well, now we know yes. that Jungle Cruise was on that list, but it wasn't on the list originally. 
when I mm-hmm. when I went through my six. Um, the original yes. six was Peter Pan. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Small World. They mm-hmm. were going to fix a couple scenes in Small World. Um, I believe Tom Sawyer Island was one of them. I guess that was what the refurb was. Yeah. I'll find out later if, uh, depending upon if they are still up and running. Uh, they should be by the time I get there. Um, I forgot the other two now. But I know that there was a lot of inclusion stuff that they were going to fix. Uh, I know for most of you who love Peter Pan's Flight, they will be changing the Tiger Lily scene due to um, the way that they look. And a lot of people were not happy um, how they portrayed Indians or indigenous mm-hmm. people. We have to say that. So that was one of the scenes. And then as as we know now, Jungle Cruise is going to be on that list. I believe the Country Bears was on that list. Yes, the Country I, Bears was on that list. Uh, two of their songs have are going to be changing, mm-hmm. which is the uh, the one the one song where every guy gets me shook. He always gives me dirty looks. Yes. All the guys that turn me on, turn me down. They're going to be changing that one. And okay. I believe the song where Mama Don't Whoop Little Buford, they're mm-hmm. going to be changing that one as well. Okay. Bang. <laughs> so that was going to be changed. But I know that the picture that they showed us for the Jungle Cruise with the monkeys now on top of the, um, the Jungle Cruise cruise ship itself. Uh-huh. They are they are actually going to be building that. That is actually a real picture that will be built for the ride. I, saw uh, I don't know where it's going to be, but I know that a lot I of the scenes. I also wondered if they are going to incorporate um, anything, any elements from the uh, new Jungle Cruise ride, or not ride movie. Yes. Welcome, um, Angie. Thanks for watch or thanks for listening. Yes, welcome, Angie. Um, so with the Jungle Cruise movie coming out this to Disney Plus, I believe they're coming out with. So it's coming out Disney Plus um, this July. July, yes. We will most likely be seeing changes that will incorporate the movie in it. Um, mm-hmm. I heard the skippers were another one that they're going to be getting rid of. Um, well, which Pirates makes... is also on that ride or on that list, but they've already taken care of the pirates. Yes, Pirates was on that list because of the redhead scene. And that's where it all started, where we want the redhead uh, protest came into play. But but with the new Jungle Cruise, I heard that they're trying to incorporate over the the speaker. Now it's going to be The Rock doing a couple of uh, scenes on the uh, radio head uh, Mm -hmm. with some scenes from the movie. Uh, I'm hoping the everyone I'm, I'm, from what I spoke to. I'm hoping these changes come a little after the movie comes out because I would like to see what the movie does first. You mean kind of like when they updated uh, Anna and Elsa's attire before anybody had a chance to see the movie? Yes, I was. I was saying to myself when I saw movie, that like it came out. Well, it came out on. Uh, you know, the movie came out, and the next day, Anna's already in her queen outfit. So right. Her coronation dress, so. And I was saying to myself, I was like, oh, where did the where did this come from? I was like, mm-hmm. I haven't even, and I was going to go see the movie that day when I noticed that they uh, did the changeover. Yeah, we so. just to see it the opening weekend. But, what was the other one? Oh, the, with this inclusive, I'm. A lot of people are talking, um, and I read an article that there might actually not be changing Splash Mountain. Really now? The so take, the, video, or take the song out of the south out. Um, from what I read in the article, now this is someone's opinion, uh, but they mm-hmm. also had some facts in it. Mm-hmm. Disney is running out of money, which we all know, because that is why Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, Tron has been delayed up until 2022 now. Yes. So they are running out of money. 
Now, and they have all these other projects that they want to revamp and all that. Mm-hmm. With the revamp and the retheming of Splash Mountain to Prince of the Frog, it is going to cost a lot of money, especially when you're going to have to gut out all those animatronics, and yeah. you might not even be able to reuse them. You're going to have to replace them with new animatronics, which Disney already made a statement by Bob Chepek himself, Chepek himself, said they are going to be making less and less animatronics. So, if what you are can't... Be replacing them with? Uh, with these hologram stuff? I mean, if you already look... I'm not a fan of the holograms. But this is what I found out. If you're not going to be doing any new animatronics, what is there to say that if these new, if the old animatronics can't be, you know, reshaped to Princess and the Frog, you're not going to have anything. So, which means the ride can't be built. Mm-hmm. Which means Bob is going to have to build new animatronics or do what I already said, which is give Princess and the Frog, Tiana, her own ride. Brand new. Don't use something. And, and this is what I've been trying to explain to people is Splash Mountain breaks down like six or seven times a day. Mm-hmm. We had gotten stuck on Splash Mountain before, right under the waterfall. My daughter got soaked. Oh, that's the worst place to get stuck. Oh, yeah. she. We were sitting there for ten minutes. And do you really want a brand new three-themed ride of Princess of the Frog to break down seven or eight times a day? No, I, yeah. I would rather yes, have... Kept, people were very discouraged whenever Frozen opened up and... It kept breaking down and breaking down and breaking down with a four-hour wait. Right. And that's why I said. If you at least build a new ride, mm-hmm. you can get the kinks out quicker than you would with an old ride. Yeah. So. New track, new everything. I really like the trackless type system. I think they could do amazing things with a Princess and the Frog ride and put it maybe in, like, Liberty Square area if they would utilize – the technology from the Beauty and the Beast ride in uh, Disneyland Paris. Oh, I agree. But I, I tell everyone, this is my idea. My idea is, mm-hmm. I know they refurb Tom Sawyer Island, but if you go to Disney as much as I do, you don't see, and I've asked a lot of cast members, they said a lot of people don't go there over to the island at all. It's not as much. It's very, very mm-hmm. rare you see someone go over there. And yeah. I said, well... We have never actually been over there. My, All of my children have been at least four times, and my youngest is five, thanks 2020. Um, and we have never been to Tom Sawyer's Island. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that, that proved my point. And the point is, okay, what is a way to get people over there? I get it. You like... The jungle part, you know, the little, you know, jungle gym part and all that. But mm-hmm. why don't you do what they do over in Paris? They have uh, – their Tom Shore Island is not even Tom Shore Island. It's the entire track ride for uh-huh. Big Thunder Mountain. So okay. why not build a, a, a ride on Tom Shore Island, which would allow you guys to take the tugboats, the little um, little rafts, over mm-hmm. there – as part of the theming of Prince and the Frog, since that is a Louisiana type thing. Yeah. Why not build them a whole brand new ride on the island? And with the little sh- restaurant over there, you could build Tiana's place. Boom. Yeah, like you got you got a restaurant and a ride. I mean, it makes perfect sense. You keep Splash Mountain the way it is. You get a new ride for Princess and the Frog, you get a restaurant over there, you get more new life. Yeah, that's true. But who who knows? We'll see in a couple of years what they decide to do, if they decide to cancel mm-hmm. the project um, now that um, – um, his name is 
escaping me, the one who made uh, Splash Mountain. You, you know his name. Ready? Yes, thank you. I'm was drawing a blank a little bit. Ready? Now that he's gone, I, I don't think it. Uh, I don't think the Prince and the Frog is going to do any justice now, especially the new people who make these rides. I uh, don't get me wrong. I love the people who made you know Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Um, I do like the the new Star Wars ride, uh, Rise of Resistance. Um, but they're all like you said, they're all trackless rides. Um, we can't, and now the new Ratatouille ride is also trackless. You can't just turn every ride to trackless. This is true. I still would like to see the Beauty and the Beast ride from Paris come to Fantasyland and go near uh, the Argas in Gaston's Tavern. Like right in between the two of them would be a perfect place for it. I I agree, and I think if you go on Google Maps and you can look, um, or Google Earth, I believe. Unfortunately, they probably would have to get rid of Gaston's Tavern, or they would have to do what they're doing over at Disneyland to build Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. They would have to tear down at least a little bit of the building and make a path going to the back of the the, the building to build the ride. So, I mean, there is some space back there that they could build it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes sense because that could be a whole Beauty and the Beast section, and then you got Little Mermaid right so, next to it. Not to circle back again to Splash Mountain, but Tony Baxter was one of the original Imagineers for Splash Mountain. Yes, Tony Baxter. I... And Tony Baxter will be helping reimagine it to Princess and the Frog. Okay, well then – then I don't have as much of a fear of how this is going to end up then. Yeah, Joe Rohde was, um, oh, the Imagineer for, uh... I know he did all the... Coaster in Animal Kingdom. I, I know he did the Everest. whole Pandora. Yeah, he was the Imagineer behind Everest as well. Right. And he had a big hand in helping uh, with the uh, theming of a two in Hollywood Studios. Yes. Edge. You know, there's one thing, and I'm, I'm going to say this now because who knows? It could happen. My my rumor, and this is just a rumor, everybody. This is not actually going to happen. Um, it could if it ever ha- if it does. With Tron being built, mm-hmm. and they're going to be doing. Whole brand new thing with, um, you know, Tomorrowland soon, whenever they decide to do it. One place I don't think is going to make it much longer is the circus. I was never on board with Storybook Circus. I, 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 I don't see them making it. As a teenager, I came to Disney World, and it was uh, Toontown. Yes. And whenever I became, and that was in 2003, and when I came back in 2013 with my kids for the first time, I was so excited to take my kids to Toontown, and then I realized that Toontown was no longer there. Yeah, unfortunately, it's only at Disneyland now. Yes. Which I was very happy to enjoy, because I felt like a kid again. Yeah, I was actually luckily able to see it. But yeah, I don't, I don't think Storybook Circus, uh, Storybook Circus is going to make it much longer. Um, I understand that's where Dumbo is and the Barnstormer, but I, I don't. There's not a lot of people are not going over there anyway, as it is. Um, I'm going to be that person. The Barnstormer reminds me of that carnival type roller coaster that they take down and set up in like an hour at a roadside carnival. It's yeah. just so jerky and it gives me a headache just riding it. Oh no. I, I I like it, but it's just it's very short and like I I'm, I think I it's more... right. to me it's just very jerky and it just gives me the feel of like a roadside carnival ride. The only problem is where would you put Dumbo? That would be the only problem is trying to figure that Dumbo's out. In, put it back in Fantasyland where it came from. Right, but how? Where would we, the only problem is where would it go? Since there's not a lot of space now in Fantasyland. That's true. Um, you don't necessarily need to retheme all of Storybook Circus, but maybe some classics could go over there. I don't know. 
Like, okay, you can keep the rides. Let's do that. Let's keep the rides. But the section where the meet and greets were, I don't mm-hmm. see them using much well, longer. They on fire a few times. Yes. And I don't think they're going to use it much longer. If you were able to take that whole section down from the restroom all the way to the Disney Junior Dance and um, the, the meet and greets, you could build mm-hmm. a whole section of the park, um, a whole nother section. You could build another land. Yeah. So I don't know it needs much more of another land as just reimagine Storybook Circus. Right, and that could be where your Beauty and the Beast can come into play. True. Because that would give you two ways of entering and exiting for the ride. Mm-hmm. So that would make sense. But you got to remember back there is a train stop for the railroad as well. Right. Um, now, I don't think they're going to be having the train. See, they're rebuilding the track, and I don't see them rebuilding. I think that train stop is going to end because – Is it now? It, the, the track is still gone. Oh, we haven't been there since 2019 before COVID. Yeah, the track they, – they tore up the track, so it's it's not even there no more. Okay. I know they were having to move parts of the track for Tron, so. Yeah, but we'll see sooner or later because we're only, what, a year a year away from possible reopening of Tron. Could be February of next year. I feel like they've been building that forever. They have been. Let, let me, just let me give you this. The company they were even acro- building it when we were in there in 2017. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. The company that was right next to Disney, Universal, mm. built Oops. the Velocicoaster ten times faster than Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy put together, and the Velocicoaster was built, started building in 2018, 2019. Well, the thing is with Tron, uh, Hong Kong Disney, Disneyland Hong, Hong Kong, or maybe Shanghai, which are the one times the Tron ride. Uh, had, Shanghai. Is it Shanghai? Yes. They had an exclusivity uh, contract for Tron, and that didn't end until summer of 2021. Okay. So while they could begin building it, they couldn't open it. That's why it's always been a – what is either 2020 or 2021 whenever it was originally set to open. And they uh, had exclusivity contracts where they couldn't open another one until after that contract ran out. Yeah, Tron was supposed to open up uh, this summer along with Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Well, no, Tron was going to open up in the fall, and Guardians of the Galaxy was going to open up in the summer. Yeah. Now it looks like Guardians of the Galaxy is going to open up at the end of this year, and mm-hmm. Tron's going to be opening up next year. But, all right, today was a very good episode. Uh, We went a little longer than we usually do, uh, but there was a lot of information that we wanted to get out. What was it? I said, but we didn't really get off topic today. In the past, when we've rambled on, we've gotten off topic a lot. Yes. You know, we've stayed pretty relevant to what we're talking about. Yes, I agree. So... I'm going to play us off. I hope you have a wonderful day. I actually have to head out myself. So I'm just going to play us out. I am as well, so. All right. I'm going to go do adult things. Yeah, same. So, so. I'm going to play us out. Who you are, anything your heart desires will come to. Your heart is in your dream. No request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star, as dreamers do, fate is kind. Shape of
brings to those who lie. The sweet fulfillment of the secret longing, like a boat out of the blue, face I've seen and sees you through. When you wish upon a star, your dreams come. In your dream, no.